tonight. I'm Dr. Kyle Swanson from the Foot and Ankle Center, along with well wellness dietitian Krista Luce. And we are here to present to you tonight about wound care and nutrition. We would like to thank ASB Community Wellness and uh, Aaron Fox for sponsoring this and setting this up for us tonight. And we, we feel it would be a great uh, time to uh, discuss wound care and nutrition. These two topics go hand in hand and are very important uh, to help heal wounds. So without further further to do, we'll get started. So I'd like to begin our presentation with a little background information, uh, some causes of wounds, uh, specific role of uh, my role as a podiatrist uh, regarding wound care, uh, our uh, wound care center, and some information about what we have to offer, and then other various treatments to help heal wounds. So to begin, just real quickly, um, the skin, it's the largest organ in our body. Uh, roughly covers about 16% of our total body weight, so that's quite a bit. Uh, there's two main layers. The epidermis is the outer layer, and the dermis is the layer right below that. Um, our skin has very many functions. Uh, it helps protect us from the outside environment. It helps with thermal regulation uh, when we sweat and help cool our, our bodies. Uh, it also helps with metabolism. Uh, it helps to absorb vitamin D, uh, which is um, very important for our health. So there's very many functions of our skin. The definition of a wound is any damage which causes a break in the skin. And that is a very broad uh, definition, but within that is some very important factors and a lot more detail. One thing is uh, timing, whether it is acute or the wound is, uh, has just happened or it's a more of a chronic wound. Uh, we typically like to address these wounds as soon as we can to help heal them up uh, in a timely fashion. When a wound gets to about one month, uh, we consider it to be more of a chronic issue. The depth of the wound is very important as well. Uh, we have a classification system uh, regarding partial versus full thickness, regarding a certain level, and wounds can even extend down to tendon, muscle, and bone. When they reach the bone, this can become very concerning uh, in developing bone infection, which can be very difficult to treat. Our main goal is to help prevent any lower extremity amputations secondary to bone infection. There are very many causes uh, to why wounds can develop. Uh, a lot of times these days we see them secondary to diabetes, um, neuropathy, or when patients do not feel their feet or lower legs, vascular issues, regarding arterial flow, which is the blood flow from your heart to your feet, and then the venous system, which is from your feet back up to your heart. Uh, traumatic, uh, we see this in motor vehicle accidents, other types of injuries as well. Surgical wounds, uh, sometimes patients develop uh, wounds, unfortunately, from surgical procedures. Burns, and also pressure wounds. Uh, if certain areas of our body have increased pressure on them, uh, and there is a decrease in tissue and cushion, it actually can strangulate the tissue and cause a wound. I wanted to put this slide in here just to inform everybody of uh, the typical healing process of wounds. There's four main stages. Uh, number one is hemostasis. So when we get a wound, uh, we bleed and our body is trying to react to that initial trauma by stopping that bleeding. Number two is the inflama uh, inflammatory stage. That is where the body tries to remove the bacteria and all of the uh, debris. Uh, the second stage, inflammatory phase, is the phase in which wounds stall. So the body feels that it has healed this wound, and so it is, it's done trying to uh, do any further healing. Uh, this is the stage that uh, needs attention and needs routine attention to help, uh, in an essence, trick the body to then start that healing process again. Uh, the last two stages are the proliferative and remodeling stage, where the body starts to develop new blood vessels and forms new uh, collagen to help repair that wound and return to skin. So the role of a podiatrist, uh, our job is to identify the cause of the wound. There can be a single cause or there can be multiple causes. Uh, there's also underlying components that we need to address regarding infection control, uh, blood flow issues, and the pressure issues that we had mentioned earlier. Uh, Wounds need to be properly offloaded in order to heal. Other comorbidities or health issues can impact wound healing as well. Diabetes, neuropathy, edema, or swelling. When our skin swells, the skin gets very fragile and we can develop wounds that become very leaky and drain fluid and are very difficult to treat. And then other metabolic issues. 
Um, albumin is a protein in our body that can help heal wounds. Uh, that's just one example, but there are many, many others as well. Uh, our job also is when appropriate, we order further tests uh, regarding uh, infection control. We may order a wound culture to see exactly what bacteria is growing and dress appropriately with antibiotics. We may order vascular studies and some other imaging or lab work, uh, x-ray, sometimes MRI. We work very close uh, with our infectious disease specialists and our cardiology department as well uh, and try to tackle these wounds uh, from all angles. And not to mention, we also work really close with our patients' family physicians and uh, dietitians as well. So various treatments for wounds. Uh, number one is wound debridement. This is where we, we remove that biofilm or that material that's stuck in that inflammatory phase we mentioned earlier. That tricks the body and it helps stimulate the healing process to shorten that time period up. Um, offloading a wound, we can do this with padding, uh, mobilization, whether that be with a cast or other modalities, uh, topical medications, antibiotic topicals, and advanced skin substitutes, which we're able to offer. Uh, these are uh, becoming a uh, very advanced technology that can help uh, speed up that healing process. Edema management or uh, swelling control. Uh, there are compression therapies, different types of wraps or pumps that can be of aid, uh, routine dressing changes. Uh, we need to closely monitor these wounds. Uh, when we, what, the progress that we're looking for is in four weeks, we should see a reduction of 50% of the wound size. If, if not, there may be some underlying component that is causing this wound to stall out in its healing. Lastly, a surgical intervention is sometimes needed. Uh, this is necessary when there's a structural deformity that if it is causing increased pressure or uh, inhibiting the healing process. If we don't address that underlying issue, the wound may never close or it'll be very, very slow to heal and then may reoccur that much quicker. Uh, in our wound center, we are able to now offer hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Um, this is a very unique uh, modality uh, which delivers 100% oxygen uh, to the blood. This helps the wound bed to get that oxygen it needs to help heal this, uh, to help heal these wounds in a, in a quicker time period. Usually, uh, a patient will uh, be in this hyperbaric oxygen chamber uh, daily. Uh, and what happens is this oxygen uh, will, will be delivered through the body. And what, what it may feel like and what patients tend to experience is it's similar to uh, laying in an, or sitting in an airplane, like during an airplane ride when you may feel that pressure change in your ears. Um, there is a TV, so you're able to be entertained while you're laying in that chamber. Uh, we, f we feel that this is a great uh, modality to be able to incorporate to help heal wounds as well. Um, in conclusion, uh, regarding wounds, every patient is different and every wound is different. We need to do a thorough evaluation and when appropriate, uh, order additional testing to help optimize uh, the healing. Our main goal is to heal these wounds as quickly as possible and prevent any further complications. Uh, in our specialty, that is uh, lower extremity amputations. And with healing wounds as quickly as we can, we can get you back on your feet that much quicker as well. Uh, so now I'd like to turn it over to Don Stanislavskis. Okay, thank you, Kyle. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about the nutrition side in regards to wound care. Um, it can really play a, a role in the healing process for wounds. Um, so our first slide here, kind of just looking at um, our overall nutrition needs. So you can hit the next slide. Okay, well, we'll we'll move on without the slide. So the first slide, just talking a little bit about overall nutrition. Um, so there are some specific nutrition requirements uh, in regards to wound care, but overall, you know, trying to eat a well-balanced diet. So eating foods from every food group, making sure that we're getting our protein-rich foods, 
our whole grains, fruits and vegetables, and dairy products. Um, another, you know, kind of overall nutrition goal is making sure that we're getting adequate calorie intake. So making sure that we're eating enough to uh, have our body have enough energy to help heal our wounds. So, you know, eating three meals each day, trying not to skip any meals, and then incorporating snacks in between as needed. And then also remembering that nutrition is very individualized. So we all have different needs, um, you know, based on different diagnoses or, you know, the stage of the wound our needs are very different. So if you have any specific questions regarding your needs, making sure that you're working with um, a registered dietitian to meet those. So then, you know, diving in a little bit farther to some of the specifics. So some of the key nutrients for wound care, protein, zinc, and vitamin C. So protein plays a role in wound healing because it's essential for muscle, skin, and tissue building slash repair. Um, zinc helps support immunity and wound healing. And then also vitamin C is an essential component of collagen, which also, also plays a vital role in wound healing. So then looking a little bit deeper into our zinc rich foods. So some of those include oysters, red meat, poultry, fortified breakfast cereals, beans, nuts, whole grains, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and yogurt. Um, and then looking at our next one, our protein rich foods. So the nice thing about our protein rich foods and our zinc rich foods is that some of those overlap. So it's kind of easy to get both of those. Um, so just making sure we're including a variety of things like beans, beef, pork, chicken, turkey, fish, cottage cheese, dairy products, nuts, eggs. Um, so like I said, including a variety of all these foods, they're all a little bit higher in different vitamins and minerals. So it's really important just to make sure we're including a variety of these protein rich sources. Then looking at our vitamin C rich foods, we have red bell peppers, oranges, grapefruit, kiwi fruit, green bell peppers, broccoli, strawberries. So, you know, making sure you know, I think the first thing we think of for vitamin C rich foods is oranges or citrus fruits. So remembering too, that there's a lot of other good fruits and vegetables that are high in vitamin C. So then putting that all together, um, some general nutrition tips, trying to consume one of those protein rich sources at each meal, um, and even at one to two of those snacks each day. So maybe that looks like maybe a snack could look like you know, apples with some peanut butter for our protein source or some low fat cheese with crackers and some grapes. Um, and then also, you know, trying to include a zinc rich food at each meal. So picking one of those off the list or, you know, that could look like for lunch, a whole whole wheat sandwich with some lean chicken breast. And that would include both the protein and those zinc sources. And then also including a vitamin C rich food one to two times a day. So looking at that vitamin C rich food list, um, actually the first five foods on that PowerPoint slide could meet 100% of your needs. So making sure to include one or two of those each day. Um, so again, you know, the biggest thing is making sure that general nutrition recommendations that we're including a wide variety of foods and including foods from each food group um, with the wounds, you know, focusing on those protein zinc and those vitamin C rich foods. Um, but if you have any questions at all in regards to your specific needs, if you have a wound, um, you can ask, you know, your physician to send a referral over to me. Um, and we can set up a meeting to talk more about your specific needs. But if anybody has any questions at all about anything I, I talked about, I included my email here and my phone number. So please feel free to reach out. And also I know on um, the Facebook or the YouTube page, you can leave any comments or questions, concerns there, and we're happy to get back to you for those. All right, great, thanks Krista. Thanks everybody again for joining us tonight. I hope this was helpful in seeing the correlation between wounds and nutrition. They really go hand in hand and uh, really appreciate you joining us. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.
and we'd be happy to get back to you. Um, and in the meantime, we hope you have a safe, healthy, and happy spring. Have a good night.